वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल स्टडी द फर्स्ट चैप्टर फ्रॉम पेपर टू दैट इज वेव थियोरी ऑफ लाइट राइट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग मैन वॉज नोइंग दैट लाइट इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी नाउ एनर्जी कैन बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन टू फॉर्म्स दैट आर पार्टिकल्स एंड वेव्स हेंस अकॉर्डिंगली टू थियरीज were proposed regarding the nature of light one theory was proposed by the great scientist newton according to which light is composed of very small tiny elastic weightless particles known as corpuscles the second theory was proposed by huygens which is known as huygens wave theory as per this theory the light is propagated in form of waves this theory was proposed by huygens in 1678 it is based on following five important assumptions the first is light is propagated in form of longitudinal waves these waves are emitted by the source of light and travel in straight lines with uniform velocity through a homogeneous medium when light enter our eyes it creates an optical impression on the retina hence we get the sensation of light different colors are due to different wavelengths of light waves light waves are mechanical waves for propagation of these waves a hypothetical medium called luminiferous ether is present everywhere light travels through ether in form of waves though this theory was better than the corpuscular theory the theory was not accepted immediately the merits of the theory were the phenomena like reflection refraction polarization simultaneous reflection and refraction total internal reflection diffraction etc can be successfully explained with this theory according to huygens theory the speed of light in denser medium is less than speed of light in rarer medium this conclusion is in perfect agreement with the experimental findings though these two merits were better to explain or to justify the theory there were some demerits also the first one being the existence of so called luminiferous ether assumed by huygens was not confirmed the rectilinear propagation was not explained by the theory it was later on justified by fresnel diffraction was explained much later and this theory could not explain photoelectric emission hence after 150 years this theory was accepted wave front it can be defined as the locus of all the points of the medium to which the wave reaches simultaneously so that all the points are in the same phase hence the points which are equidistant from the source of light receive the wave simultaneously and they are in the same phase hence they are called the points on the wave front wave normal a perpendicular drawn to the surface of the wave front at any point is called a wave normal it is in the direction of propagation of light at that point a ray of light is the direction in which the light travels hence wave normal is same as ray of light in case of spherical wave front the rays diverge from one point and for plane wave front the rays are parallel to each other there are 
three type of wave fronts first one spherical wave front consider a point source of light s the light waves emitted by it travel in all possible directions if c is the velocity of light then after time t each wave will reach the surface of a sphere of radius ct with center s this spherical surface is called spherical wave front at time t the second type of wave front is plane wave front at a very large distance from the point source the spherical wave front is so large that a small part of it is almost plane this is called plane wave front thus the wave front emitted by the sun is originally spherical wave front but the wave front which we receive on the earth is plane wave front one more type of wave front is emitted which is called cylindrical wave front if the source of light is linear that is a slit it produces a cylindrical wave front huygens principle every point on the wave front acts as a secondary source of light sending out secondary waves the envelope of all these secondary waves at any later instant gives the new wave front at that instant if the nature of the wave front at any instant is known we can determine the nature and position of the wave front at any later instant by huygens construction which is based on huygens principle accordingly a spherical wave front remains a spherical wave front and a plane wave front remains a plane wave front with the help of wave theory of light we can justify reflection of light in reflection of light three laws are obeyed the first one is the angle of reflection is congruent to the angle of incidence means the measure of angle of incidence is same as measure of angle of reflection the second law is regarding the positions of incident and reflected rays incident rays and reflected ray are on the opposite sides of the normal in the third law we find the plane in which these three things lie that are incident ray reflected ray and the normal the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal at the point of incidence lie in the same plane these three laws can be verified using wave theory of light similarly the laws of refraction also can be verified with wave theory of light there are three laws of refraction the first one is the sine of angle of incidence upon sine of angle of refraction that is the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to sine of angle of refraction is always constant this constant is called refractive index of the given media hence if the light enters from the first medium to the second medium making i as angle of incidence and r as angle of refraction then the refractive index of second medium with respect to first is given as 1 n2 is equal to sin i upon sin r with the wave theory of light we can prove that this refractive index of second medium with respect to first is the ratio of velocity of light in the first medium c1 to the velocity of light in the second medium c2 therefore n is equal to c1 upon c2 now velocity can be expressed as the product of frequency and wavelength 
frequency of any wave remains same even though the wave changes the medium. Hence, C1 and C2 can be replaced by f into lambda 1 and f into lambda 2. Hence, 1 and 2 can also be written as lambda 1 upon lambda 2. The wavelengths of light are very small. Hence, they are expressed in smaller units called angstrom unit represented either by AU or degree angstrom. One angstrom unit is 10 raised to minus 10 meter. Later on, it was proved that light is not a mechanical wave. James Clerk Maxwell proved that light is an electromagnetic wave. So, according to Maxwell, light is a transverse electromagnetic wave. Electromagnetic waves are generated by varying electric and magnetic fields. These fields are mutually perpendicular and also perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. Out of these two vectors, the electric vector decides the optical characteristics of light. Hence, it is called optical vector or light vector. When the variation in this electric field are taking place in one plane only, the light is called plane polarized or linearly polarized. The propagation vector and the electric vector form a plane. The plane in which the electric vector varies is called plane of variation and the plane perpendicular to it is called plane of polarization. Now light is generated by atoms. When light is coming from electronic transition in one atom, it is possible to have variation in electric vector to be in one plane. But when the light is coming from electronic transition in number of atoms, the electric vector may vary in different planes, all of them being perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light waves. This happens in ordinary light sources such as filament lamp, incandescent lamp, etc. Hence, light from such sources is unpolarized. Brewster's Law An unpolarized light can be polarized in different waves. Scientist Melus developed the simplest method to polarize the light by simultaneous reflection and refraction. When a beam of unpolarized light is incident on a plain glass surface, part of the light is reflected and the remaining part is refracted, that is transmitted through the glass. The reflected light is partially polarized. At a certain angle of incidence, the reflected light is completely polarized. In 1892, Sir David Brewster discovered that when the light is incident on a transparent medium at a polarizing angle theta p, the reflected light is plane polarized in the plane of incidence. In this situation, the reflected and refracted rays are perpendicular to each other. He also proved that the tangent of angle of incidence at which complete polarization takes place by simultaneous reflection and refraction is numerically equal to the refractive index of the refracting material. If theta p is the polarizing angle and n is the refractive index of the refracting medium and r is the angle of refraction, then 
in the figure it can be seen that angle of incidence is theta p and angle of refraction is 90 minus theta p now according to snell's law n is equal to sin i upon sin r therefore n is equal to sin theta p upon sin 90 minus theta p now sin 90 minus theta p can be replaced by cos theta p hence n becomes sin theta p upon cos theta p that is tan theta p hence tan theta p is numerically equal to the refractive index n of the transparent material this is known as brewster's law as the refractive index of a medium depends on the wavelength of light the polarizing angle also depends on the wavelength the polarization can be done by nicol prism also when an unpolarized light is passed through a calcite crystal or quartz or woodzite crystal that is zns it is refracted in two ways as shown in the figure the properties of these rays are totally different the phenomenon of refraction of incident rays into two refracted rays is called birefringence and the crystal is called birefringent crystal the two rays thus produced are linearly polarized and perpendicular to each other one of these rays obeys Snell's law and gets refracted. It is called ordinary ray or O ray. The other, which do not obey Snell's law and moves along the same straight line, is called extraordinary ray or E ray. The incident ray do not always refract into two rays. If the incident ray is along the line called optical axis, it do not split at all. Thus, with Nicol prism, we can polarize the light. There are certain films or crystals who have the property to absorb one of the refracted rays and transmit the other. The property is called dichroism and the material is called dichroic. A sheet of such material is called polaroid. As shown in the figure, when an unpolarized light is passed through a dichroic material, the light whose plane is parallel to the axis of the material, that is vertical in the given diagram, is passed through it and the rest of the light rays whose plane makes some angle with the axis of the material are absorbed. In this way, we get linearly polarized light on the other side of the polaroid. The Nicol prism and the polaroid sheet are used together to study the optical properties of the materials. Polaroid sheets are also used to generate and detect linearly polarized light. They are also used in spectacles used to see 3D movies. They are also used in LCDs.